All right, let's move on. This morning, my title this morning is The Steps of a Good Man. <clears throat> All right, this will be the uh, theme that I have, The Steps of a Good Man. Uh, let's, let's move on to the slide. Uh, okay, this is not on yet. Huh? This is a portion of scriptures that I will be sharing. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Very important word. Yeah? And he delights, God delights in his way. Verse 24, though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. For the Lord upholds him with his hands. Verse 25, I have been young and now am old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his descendants begging bread. Let's pray. Father, we thank you this morning that we can come together in your name. And Father, may your presence continue to be here. And Father, let's help, help us, Lord, open up our minds and our understanding so that we can receive the word of the Lord this morning in Jesus' name. This portion of scriptures, in fact, the entire Psalm 37, uh, uh, David, King David wrote this psalm when he was old in the twilight of his life. And uh, this portion of scriptures is a very, very special portion of scriptures. In fact, the entire psalm of 37. He, he, he was reflecting, he was uh, uh, looking back into his life when he was young, when he, you know, being king, so on and so forth. You know, that uh, he, he has gone through many, many experiences in his life. The good time, the bad time, the defeat, the victory, so on and so forth. This, this, is, this was the King David. You know, in life, life, you know, we have up and down, correct? No? Yeah. Sometimes, you know, we, uh, we, we have the victory, you know. Sometimes maybe certain situation, you know, we are not so well. Whatever situation, so this King David, you know, he, he was looking back into all his experiences in his life. And now he is old already. He was very old already. But he said this, that, you know, the steps of a good man. Yeah. The steps of a good man. Not only one step, not only two steps. You find that the steps, many steps, every steps. So he come to the conclusion and say that, you know, the steps of a good man are ordered by God. You know, this psalm, you know, speaks about, you know, the faithfulness of God, the love of God, the goodness of God. Until, you know, when he was young, when he was old, you know, he concluded and said that, you know, in all these experiences that I have, in all this life I'm living as a king, so on and so forth, you know, I know that the steps of a good man are ordered by God. God will order our life. Very important in our life. So we must acknowledge this. We must know this. All right, so I move on from here. <coughs> Please help me. Oh, the, the brother is moving up. <coughs> yeah, please, please do help me. Next slide, please. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Now, our steps are very important to God. Your steps are important to God. 
You know, the day one when you come to know Jesus, we have a pathway of life. There is a journey of life that we got to travel with God. And God will look after our steps. That's why here I have put here is that our steps are important to God. <clears throat> yeah. There is this, this life that we live, every step that we move on, every step that we move on, this journey of life. We must realize, we must know that, you know, God will see and watch our every steps. God will ensure that our steps are strong, firm, and move on for God. There, there is a plan that God has for us. The very first day that we come to know Jesus, this pathway of life is a very special life that God has given to us. There is a plan that God has worked out for us. Therefore, every step that we take, God will make sure that we'll move on to the destiny, the, the plan that God had for us. We must realize this. We must know this. You know, when you come to know Jesus, you have this pathway of life. God doesn't let you wander around. You want to go hold up, man? Eh? God doesn't allow you to wander around aimlessly. God has a plan. God has a purpose for you when you come to know Jesus. And therefore, God wants to make sure that your steps, your steps will move on towards God's plan and God's purposes. What is these steps that, you know, I'm talking about? These steps speaks about our direction in life. These steps speaks about our choices, our decision, our action, our direction, the way that we are going. Correct or not? Every step you take. That's why the portion of scriptures that I put in, a man, a man's heart plan his way. We do plan something correct or not? We do plan, uh, we want to do this, 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 you know, kind of thing, you know. And the man's heart plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. Very important, yeah. Make sure that every one of us don't think that, you know, after I, can, I come to know Jesus, you know, I don't know what to do. Lah. God will show you. God will direct your steps. God will make sure that your steps is in steps with God. Very important for us to realize this. So, you know, brothers and sisters, you must realize that, you know, God has a special plan for you. Every one of us. God being the good shepherd, yeah, He is a good shepherd. And we are his sheep. Sometimes sheep may wander around, correct or not. Yeah? But the good shepherd will make sure that, you know, you will go back to the right steps. You move back. You move according to the God's plans for you. From day one, you come to know Jesus. Church, this morning, what are you doing now? You may say, ah, yeah, I work in this company, a lousy boss, la. you know, no use one, la. you know, I better go somewhere, but I don't know where to go, and I don't know what to do. No, God has special plan. If God put you there, there is something that God has for you. I want to move a little bit further here, you know. What God expects our steps to be like. He expects our steps to be from 
strength to strength. Every day we walk with God, you know, we will gain strength. We will gain strength. We walk in strength. But we walk in the strength of God. You know, our steps are firm, strong, and move towards the direction that God has for us. Yeah. God will give us the strength. We are His child. You know, God will give us the ability, the strength to move on from glory to glory. So our steps are firm. You know, He will move us on. They, they are weak. Those that are weak, God is going to strengthen them. One of the Bible words in Deuteronomy, is, I think it's there. 33 verse 25 says, you know, as for your days, so shall your strength be. As for your days, today, if I need more strength, today I need God, God, you give me the strength. So God for that day will give you sufficient day strength to move on in life. Very important. Huh? Our steps to be from faith to faith. Our steps to be from glory to glory. We are moving towards to, to, to eternity. So we are moving, moving on from faith to faith, from glory to glory. Every day we are shining for Jesus. You know, we are moving in our life. You know, we are, we are steps, our steps are firm and, and steady. And we move on from glory to glory until we see Jesus face to face one day. So this is what the steps of a good man. I got, I got, I'm going back to this portion of scriptures. I highlighted a little bit here and there. The steps I already mentioned already of a good man are ordered by God. What is this ordered by God? What is it? The steps of a good man are ordered by God. The word ordered means that, you know, God will establish your steps. God will strengthen, establish yourself. God will, will ordain your steps to be in accordance to what God wants you to go. He is there. He will order your steps. He will ordain your steps. He will decree that your steps will move on. So the order, the word is very, very important. We are not living it to faith. M-A-T-E. God ordered it that way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. For the Lord upholds him with his hand. Yes, sometimes, you know, because of our carelessness, weaknesses, because of our shortcoming, we may seem to slumber, slumber. But, you know, in that kind of a situation, you find that, you know, God will uphold, He will still uphold us with His hand. The hands of God speaks about power. Speaks about ability. So, God's hand, you know, the, the very hands of God that uh, uphold the whole evening was, is the very same hands that God will uphold us in times of need. Verse 25 say, I have been young and now old. Yeah, that's why, you know, uh, King David was writing at, you know, as old age. I'm young, but now I'm old. But yet, I have not seen the righteous forsaken. You are the good man. The good man. You have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. You have a relationship with God. And King David said, you know, this righteous man, this good man, 
will not be forsaken. Nor his descendants begging bread. Even our generation to come. Yeah. They will not beg, they will not have to beg bread if they walk with God. Now I want to continue to mention about a number of things here. You know, there are six things. Uh, the, the steps of a good man, you know, will do these six things. All right? Six key decisions that will release God's favor. So the steps of a good man, uh, the righteous man, the good man, you know, these, these steps, this righteous man, he, he, he will do these six things. And when, when, he, 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 when he does these, these things, you know, God will bless him, God's favor will upon him. So the steps of a good man will do these six things, all right? First one. He will acknowledge God. The steps of a good man, this good man, this righteous man, you know, this man, you know, who has Jesus in his life, he will always acknowledge God. A very common scriptures, I think every one of us know about this scripture, trust in the Lord. Now, sometimes it's not easy to trust in the Lord. Correct. No? Can be hard sometimes. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Not some. Huh? Trust the Lord with some of your heart. Is it? No. <laughs> with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Yeah. In all, see the word, huh? all. In all your ways, acknowledge Him and He shall direct your path. This, this is a very special portion of the scriptures. This, 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 this proverb says, you know, don't, don't trust in your own understanding. Don't depend on your own understanding to, to walk with God. You know, every step you take, you know, you, you must acknowledge God in your life. And God will direct your steps. In all your ways, acknowledge Him. In all your ways, you know, that you must recognize Him. You must acknowledge Him. Yeah. Lord, I am sick, Lord. You know, I got this, you know. God, I acknowledge You. You are my healer. I come to you. You can heal me. Your word that says by your stripes I'm healed. God, I acknowledge you. I accept you. I recognize you. In all your ways, acknowledge him. If you are going to a very, uh, coming to a very, very dangerous situation in your life, you know, you acknowledge God. God, I acknowledge you. You are my protector. And your word that says that even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you are with me. I acknowledge you. Lord, I have these financial difficulties, but Lord, I acknowledge you. You are my provider. You shall provide all I need according to the riches in Christ Jesus. So a person who walks with God, the steps of a good man, he will always acknowledge God. God, you are the one. God, you are the one. It is you. I give you the glory. You deserve all the glory. So on and so forth. Very important for us to do that. 
Don't say, you know, you have done something well. You know, you give glory to yourself. I do it, man. Don't, don't depend on your own understanding. This is what this portion of Scripture say. Trust in God with all your heart. Yes, God, I come to you with this need that I have, but I know you are my help in times of need. And therefore, Lord, I come in prayer and acknowledge you are my help. So on and so forth. So in acknowledging God, we are choosing God. God, I choose you at all times. Irrespective of whatever situation, I choose you, I acknowledge you, I want you. Choosing God, don't choose other things. You know, there was this story talking about a very rich, rich man. One day, you know, he invited some of the orphans some of the orphans to his house. So, you know, the orphans come to his house and look at his house with all the things displayed in the cupboard, you know, in the, the on the table, you know, the jewelries, the gold watch, you know, so on and so forth. All the very expensive things, you know. Then the rich man say, you know, you can bring one thing back. You choose one thing you like. You see all those things. You choose one thing you like. This is my gift to you. You can choose it. You can take it and go back. So some of the children, the orphans, you know, so see the gold watch. Wow, very expensive. So he chose this one. So the lady see the, wow, the jewelries. Uh, wow, the jewels. Uh, all these diamonds. Uh, and then choose uh, and take back. And one day back. Some ladies, uh, some girls are, uh, wow, very, very expensive uh, clothing, so on and so forth, uh, dress, so on and so forth, and go and take back. But out of all these orphans out there, there was this one uh, little boy, quietly, you know, standing there, you know, uh, rubbing his hands, you know, things like that. So this rich man said, hey boy, you are not choosing anything, you don't like? And then this boy, you know, quietly, you know, then go to the rich man, you know, and then he hugged the rich man. Then this boy said, Sir, can I choose you? He doesn't want all this kind of a jewels, goals, whatever. He just want to choose the billion, the billionaire. Because he thought that, you know, if I have the billionaire, you know, I choose him, I have everything. So when we choose God, you will not be dismayed. You will not be lack of anything. If, if we choose God, God will provide. God will, will help us. God will give us. Therefore, you know, in all our life, we must acknowledge Him and choose Him. All right, I'll move on. Number two, the steps of a good man, this is something he will do. He will always ponder, meditate, think about God's word. He will hide God's word in his heart. He will keep the precious word of God in his heart. As I've said, you know, this, the steps of a good man, he, he, he had a journey of life to travel. The spiritual life that he has to travel. The plan that God has for him. So this life that he has, yeah, he, need, he needs direction. He needs direction. If we are going to fulfill the plan, the purpose of God, the destiny that God has for us, you know, we, we need direction in life. 
We need direction in life. You know, we need God's Word to guide us. God's Word is just like a road map to show us in our journey of life. Say, Pastor, I know lah. You don't need to talk about so much about this. God's word, who doesn't know? Everybody know. Yeah, yeah, sure I know. But the thing is, this word of God is very special because this word of God will change us, will change our mind, will change our heart. This God's word you know, will direct us, will lead us to the destiny, to lead us to the destination. If I don't know how to come to this uh, uh, Saramban Life Assembly from my house, what I do? Nowadays, are uh, very easy. Uh. Go for what? Waves. Uh. Yeah, waves show you. What happened? There's no waves. There's no, no road map. No signboard. Very susa, very difficult for you to reach here, go right now. So in life, we will have difficulties. In life, we will face problems, so and so forth. You know, we need direction, we need help. So the steps of a good man. I talk, I, I talk about the steps. Steps has to do with our decision, our direction, our choices, so and so forth. So in our decision making, in our choices, in our direction in life, we need God's Word to show us. And many times, the Spirit of God will help us, enlighten us, illuminate the Word of God. The Holy Spirit will confirm the God's Word in us, so on and so forth. But I want to add one thing extra. We don't hear just God's Word. We don't just have God's Word. But when we know God's Word, we must also put God's Word into practice. We must obey God's word. It's very important. There's no point you know God's word and you are not doing it. That's why Jesus was mentioning two builder, building the house. The first one built his house upon the sand. The second one built his house upon the rock, which is the word of God. So these two fellows already built the house, look exactly the same, you know, externally see, wow, this is a very good house, you know, so on and so forth. But when the, when the wind comes, the, 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 the storm comes, you know, the rain comes, you know, so on and so forth, you know, the one who built his house upon the rock will still stand strong. And Jesus mentioned this illustration and say, you know, about, about, about the wise man who built his house upon the rock as, as where whoever hear this saying of mine and put them into practice and does them. So church today, let us put God's word into practice. Obey God's word. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. You know the truth and when you do what God's word say, you know about God's word and you put it into practice, the word of God will set you free. All right, I move on. Number three. Number three, expects, expect, uh, the steps of a good man will expect good things every day in his life. Yeah. He will expect good things to come in his life. He will put his faith in God and he will expect that God will do it for him. You know, in this life, uh, Many of us are facing new challenges. 
even in our country, even, even you talk about even throughout the world, globally you find that you know, there are so many challenges, so many problems. Ukraine war, not only the war, but you have the trade war, you have uh, famine, you have uh, financial uh, difficulties, you know, the economic, uh, economy, economy uh, difficulties, so on and so forth. Even in our own country, you find, you know, many things, you know, have changed. Currency is dropping, you know, the economy is okay, but slowly doing better and better. But in all this kind of a situation in life, you know, we can, we can, we can, we can, we can live uh, 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 in a situation of despair, discouragement, and, and find that, you know, there is no more hope. Yeah? This is the situation, the steps of a good man <clears throat> Is, 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 is the person who, who, who doesn't matter whether it's good time, bad time, whatever situation, he will still expect good things to come in his life. He will still put faith in God. Now, this portion is a very special portion of scriptures that I particularly single out because uh, this is Psalm 37. Uh, uh, King David wrote this psalm when he was in a time of despair. People conspired wanting to kill him. The enemy is coming after him. He, he is in a, a time of uh, a, a situation of despair, discouragement, you know, so on and so forth. But here, you know, the, you see the response of King David. He say that, you know, I would have lo lost heart. I would have lost heart unless I have believed that I would see, see what? See the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. This is King David. Yeah, in this situation, it seems so difficult. People are coming after me, you know, they want to kill me, so on and so forth. I, I, I'm in a very difficult situation, but, but King David said, yes, in all this situation, I still believe you. I still have faith in you that in the land of the living, I will see the goodness of God. Not in the land of the dead. If in the land of the dead, you will die, you're no more already. No more hope already. But he said, hey, I declare, in, 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 in the land of the living, I will still see, I still see that God is good. The goodness of God is with me. The goodness of God will come. So the steps of a good man will declare, yes, there is hope in God. Even in times like this. That's why in verse 14, it says that wait. David said, wait. Wait what? Wait in faith on the Lord. Be of good courage. Yeah. Rejoice. And he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I said, on the Lord. So this, this was the response of King David. So the steps of a good man will do the same thing. In his life, doesn't matter what happened. But he will still wait on God. He will still take courage. He will allow his heart to be strengthened by God. And he will wait until God come into the picture and rescue him. So on and so forth. So the steps of a good man, he will find favor with God. I won't share this at this time catching up. Number four,
build supportive relationship with people of faith. The steps of a good man who know how to build strong, supportive relationship with the people of faith. Very important. Relationship. Relationship, very important. Whether it's a church relationship, of course, the first one is God's relationship with us. Whether it's family relationship, so on and so forth. Very, very important. We need to have good relationship with God. We need to have good relationship, supportive relationship, close relationship with our family, with our friend, even with the people of God in the church. So the steps of a good man will know how to build. One of these special things is the relationship with the people of God. He will treasure the relationship one with the other in the body of Christ. That's why the portion of Scripture say, you know, not neglecting the assembly together. We need one another. We need to build friendship. God is our friend, yeah? Just now we sing the song. We need to build friendship with God, with the people around us, with the people in the church, so on and so forth. We need to even build stronger relationship in our family, our children, so on and so forth. Very, very important. So here that I'm talking about building uh, a supportive relationship with the people of God in the church. We must not neglect coming to church. We must not neglect gathering together, whether in the church service or in the prayer meeting or whether in some fellowship, whatever it is, we are gathering together to encourage, to build one another in the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ. So that you know we will walk in 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 we, we will we will walk with God. We'll move towards what God wants us to do. Very, very important. You know, there was this story talking about you know uh, a, a church member, a church member, a church member, you know. Uh, he used to come to church every Sunday. What happened was that, you know, uh, because of some situations, some difficulties, some problems in his life, that, you know, he was absent from church for at least probably about a month. So finally, you know, this uh, pastor of the church uh, feel that, you know, probably, you know, will uh, go, go to visit him in his house. One day, so the pastor go to his house, knock on the door, you know, this member, you know, uh, opened the door and then saw the pastor, hey, pastor, please come in. So the pastor uh, came in, uh, inside the house and then the pastor sit next to the, the, the fireplace. In the house, uh, there's this fireplace, you know, the fire uh, was burning, you know, so on and so forth. So he just sat be, be, be next to it, next to the fireplace. So, but he didn't say any word. He just sit there quietly and then he looked at the fireplace, you know, the burning fire, you know, the charcoal, you know, the wood, so on and so forth, and burning stronger and stronger. So he admired this fireplace and then he didn't care about this this absent, this absent for one month member. So look at everything. So the other fellow uh, sit there, saw what the pastor was doing. He was a bit curious, but he did not say anything. So the pastor was there still looking, looking at the fireplace, so on and so forth. And then pastor, later on, you know, the pastor take a tongue, the tongue, and then go inside the fireplace there and take out one piece of burning amber and put it outside. And then after that, the pastors go back to his seat and then sit down there and look at the fireplace again. Wow, still burning, burning, burning. Then he looked at the piece of thing, the, 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 the piece of charcoal. 
Wow, the piece of charcoal slowly, slowly, slowly diminish, diminish. No more the fire, no more red color, so on and so forth, and die. But the pastor still sit there. Then the member look at everything. So the pastor was there, you know, sit there quietly, you know, for some time, you know, the pastor take up the tongue again and get <laughs> And, and pick up this dye amber and then put it back to the fireplace. And then the piece of uh, dying, already dyed, dead amber, and then start burning again. Then the pastor sit there. Then after that, the pastor want to go to the door there and go back. Not saying a word. So this fellow sit there cannot Take it anymore, you cannot tahan, you cannot take it anymore. Pastor, thank you uh, for your powerful message this morning. I will go to church next week. <laughs> what is it all about? When you are alone, when you are the dying ember, you know, just by the side. You will die spiritually one day. We need one another beside God Himself. Yes, we have the relationship with God. But, you know, if we are alone by ourselves, in an isolated place like this, we will spiritually die one day or, or our faith will diminish. We need to encourage one another. We need one another in the church to encourage one another, to strengthen one another. If you are down, another person will help you, will pray for you, will encourage you, will help you, whatever it is. But if you are alone there, nobody see. You don't want people to care for you. You will one day spiritually die. Church, we need supportive relationship with people of faith so that we can continue to move towards the journey that God has for us. Amen? All right, I'll move on. Now, this is a very special portion of scriptures. I, I, I just briefly go into it. Now, the righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Verse 13, look at important words. Those who are planted, planted where? In the house of the Lord. You are a child of God. You know Jesus. You have relationship with Jesus. You are planted. You are planted in the house of God. As long as you are not planted in the house of God, you will not flourish. You will not grow. Even though you have God, because God has set up the church for you. We need God. Yes. We need the word of God. Yes. We need to acknowledge God. Yes. On top of everything, we need to be planted in the house of God. So that we will flourish in the courts of the Lord. We will flourish in the presence of God. We will abide in Christ, so on and so forth. All right? Endure hardship with a positive attitude. Yes. The steps of a good man, for him, he will always endure, he will always endure hardship with a positive attitude. We know in the scriptures there are many people, you know, that they endure hardship. Paul, Peter, you know, so on, even Jesus himself. Old Testament, you know, Joseph himself also endure hardship, so on and so forth. But all these people endure hardship with a positive attitude, uh, an attitude of joy, an attitude of hope, an attitude of faith in God, so on and so forth. They endure that situation until they move towards victory. Endure. 
hardship. Whatever situation that we are in, that we can endure hardship. With God's help, the Holy Spirit, the power of God, the anointing of God, so on, the strength of God, so that we will be able to go through. That's why the scriptures that I've mentioned to you that, you know, that we can move on from strength to strength, even though we are in difficult moment. I have shared with you the scriptures where, as for your days, so shall your strength be. If you are living in difficult days, God will give you the strength so that you can go through. Don't give up on this situation like this. Always endure with God's help, God's ability, so that we can move on from glory to glory. Right? I uh, missed out this one. Now, this, this is the illustration talking about uh, 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 a donkey. You see the donkey there? The donkey. So one day, you know, this donkey, you know, fell into a well. An empty well. So this farmer, you know, looked at the donkey, you know, fell onto the, uh, the uh, uh, inside the well, and then the farmer, the farmer thinking, the farmer thinking, you know, what to do with this donkey. So the farmer looked at the donkey, you know, things like that, you know, and oh yeah, this donkey is so old already, like useless already, like, you know, this this empty well, and even need to fill up, you know, myself fill up the whole thing, like. So, you know, he called his friends to come, the neighbor to come. Hey, can you help me to fill up that well? Recover it. Lah. No need to take the, no need to retrieve the donkey out. It's already so old already. Let him die there. So this, this, this donkey, you know, uh, stay there. And then these people, you know, use the spit. Uh, 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 scoop the, 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 the soil and then throw it inside the well. So when this donkey noticed, hey, the people are throwing sand on me, the soil on me, you know, you struggle, hey, oh, please, la, hey, cry, la, yo, yo, how can, you know, yo, I'm, I'm, I'm dying already. And then suddenly this donkey, ting, 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 and then he become very quiet. And then the people continue to spit the soil. And with the each with each each soy, the 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 the, uh, the 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 neighbors, the friend that throw on the uh, the well, you know that this this donkey was shake it off, shake off the soy, and then take a step up, shake the soy and take a step up. So every of the spade, you know, of soy, you know, that throw on him, you know, he he will he will he will shake it off. He will shake it off and then take take a step step up. Until, until the whole well is covered with soil and then he move out. You know, in life, our attitude is this. Life can have a lot of spit of soil that throw on us. In life, it can be like that. You may encounter trouble and so on and so forth. You know, people throw the dirt, you know, on you. And, uh, trouble and you know, give you trouble, so and so forth. But with each of these dirts, let us shake it off and let us stand up until we walk free. So hardship will come, yes, but we must have a positive attitude. All right, I'll move on. Get up again when you fail. The last one, this will be the last one. The scriptures is there. Get up again when you fail. Many people in the Bible also talk about, you know, their life, they fail. Peter, uh, uh, some Peter, Paul, Moses, you know, uh, Peter denied the Lord three times. Paul also, you know, go through uh, persecuting the church, you know, uh, so on and so forth. So, so they go through, but, but, but they all stand up again. 
They, oh, yes, they, they, they have all this, you know, they fail, but they stand up again. And today, let us also do the same thing. Are you failing God this morning? Are you in the midst of giving up of your faith? May I encourage you this morning, get up again. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. For the Lord upholds him with his hand. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. You know, I, I do not know what is your situation this morning. But if you are discouraged because of the current situation that you are in, you can always fix your eyes upon Jesus, who is the author, the finisher of our faith. The steps of a good man are ordered by God. God has a special destiny for us. God has a specific plan for us. Let us this morning learn to acknowledge Him at all time. Let us, having God's Word in our hearts to guide us. Let us give thanks to God. Let us just put our faith in God whatever situation that we are in this morning. And God will move you on from strength to strength faith to faith, and glory to glory. Father, I pray for every one of us here this morning. May you move us on from faith to faith, strength to strength, glory to glory. May our steps be firm, strong in you as we move towards the destiny that you have for us that you will help us to fulfill the plan, the purpose that you have for us. Father, if we fall, Lord, we know with you, you will pick us up. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. We give you the glory. We commit our life before you. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. God be with you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Francis, shall we uh, rise up and sing these songs? I'm sure to this morning's topic or uh, message has, has stirred you, has already encouraged you. We are all good people, right or not? As long as you have Jesus in your life, you are good people. You are good people because we live a repentant life. Amen. So our steps are ordered or directed by the Lord. Amen. If you have. Any problem you want to pray for as we sing this song, come forward. Don't miss this opportunity to encounter with, our day, with the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, we are not sure you are righteous. You are not sure you are good. Come forward. And God will speak to us. Amen. Sing, sing this song, please. Amen. As we sing softly, do come forward, brother and sister. And uh, Pastor Peter Chong will pray for us.
Father. Thank you, Father. Truly, Lord, you are an awesome God, selfless God, generous God, faithful God. We bring it for you, Lord. Brothers and sisters, I ask you to bless them, Father. Love of God, be with them. Grace of Christ and the further of the whole ship is with them, Father. Guide their steps, Lord, as they go into the world, go into the marketplace. Direct them, Father, because they are your righteous people. We bless you, Father. In Jesus' name, may God be said, Amen. God bless all of us who come for the Sunday, next Sunday service. God bless everyone. Amen.